now he's got to defend from Pato Award. He's got there. But Erickson tries to defend. Dixon having none of that. When drivers talk about defending their position, they mean protecting themselves from being overtaken from behind, obviously. And the way that we tend to do that is we tend to park the car behind us at the apex. So if you overslow the car on entry and you get a better run out of the corner, that means they can't attack you on the next straightaway and it makes it more difficult. And obviously we're all racers, we all want to win, so it's trying to not allow that competitor to pass you. So the typical way to do that is to move your car to the inside line. So if you're coming up to a right-hand corner, you'd move over to the right-hand side so that they cannot come down the inside of you and force them to go to the outside. But there can be some corners whereby doing that, you then make the radius of the corner tighter, so you kill a bit of momentum. So you can actually be better sticking to the outside line, opening the corner up and going faster, but that's very much a, a corner to corner assessment. You need to, you need to know the corner that you're approaching and, and make that decision in the split moment, which can be trickier um, you know, in certain scenarios. Everybody always has a different strength and weakness in different parts of the track. Uh, that's what makes this sort of sport so interesting. So you know, if you feel that you are particularly confident in one area of the circuit, um, so in the brake zone, for example, you feel that you can outbreak the guy behind, uh, then you would probably not choose not to be quite so defensive in the brake zones. Um, and, and you know, you have different methods. You can go super late on the brakes and, and drop your min speed, or you can back the braking up a little bit if you have a little bit of gap and focus on your exit. So uh, you're, you're always trying to play to your strengths and, uh, and try and mitigate theirs. Uh, you can also, depending on the track conditions, uh, knowing that there are marbles and such on the exit of a corner, you can try to make them be on the, the, what they call the dirty side of the line. Moving to the inside on entry is one way to defend your position, but you can be overtaken on the outside as well. And you can also be subject to getting the undercut done on you. You know, you want to keep your car under control at all times and make sure you get a good exit to stop them from getting you at the next straight. So the one move rule really determines uh, as you are approaching a corner, you're allowed to make one defensive move, whether that be left, right. Um, once you've made that move, if a competitor is going one way or the other, you cannot then move in reaction to them. Uh, so you have to hold your line into that corner. When you see a guy really close behind you and you want to defend your position, you can make one move to change your line on the straight. You then cannot move all the way back to the outside. That would be a second change of direction, a second move, which is not allowed. You have to give your competitor space at all times. And also you can't move in reaction to the car behind. So your move has to be coming out of the previous corner, go to where you want to do it and stay there. Defending becomes blocking when you react to the guy behind you instead of making a proactive move. So a proactive move is you see that you're under threat, you move to the inside and you hold that position. If you just watch your mirror and move only when you see the guy behind you moving, that's reacting, that's blocking. Yeah, if you're making multiple maneuvers, and somebody may have a, a bit of, uh, better drive at the previous corner, getting some momentum along the straight, one of those things that you can do is try and force that driver to lift behind you with multiple maneuvers, which is technically against the rules. The key to defending and not losing um, too much lap time is by not braking too early, not killing your minimum speed too much, uh, because if, obviously if you slow yourself down, then you might only be fighting with one competitor, and if you slow down too much, you're going to bring two, three, four, five guys into it, and then defending becomes a lot more difficult in that moment. So uh, yeah, my key to not losing too much time would to be still be braking as late as you can whilst on the inside line. Obviously not too late that you miss the corner uh, and not over slowing the apex. Defending while well, not losing too much time is very tricky, but generally it means not doing too much. So if you're not under threat and you really don't have to defend your position, don't stick to your line, take the fastest line. Only move when you need to or when you feel that you're really, really under threat from a move. If you're in the middle part of an endurance race, someone is quicker than you, it can be better to just you know, not defend too much and, and let them go, focus on your race and, and figure out how you're going to get them back later. Ultimately, the closer you can stay to the racing line, the minimal amount you can make defensive maneuvers is going to help your lap time. And the more aggressive you have to be in defense, uh, the more lap time you're going to lose. So, yeah, I usually balance that based on how critical it is to hold that position at that time. You should always be looking forward. That's been my motto ever since I was in karting. Uh, if you're looking in the mirror, you're going slower. So. I generally am not a very defensive driver. Uh, I try to just run my race. My way of defending, I'm not a big, uh, you know, trying to shell the entry. I usually try to use traffic as much as I can, and I think that's the, the most efficient way to, to not lose time on track and, and still hold your position.